Auto Show fans, welcome back to another great episode of Auto Show Web TV. In this episode, we will be showing the meeting that I had with Hans of Tesla. I just got back, just finished editing the video, and now we're going to post it. Hans talks about a lot of things, including the car that I was driving, as well as the history and the future of Tesla. So we hope you enjoy it. Feel free to leave comments, and don't forget, autoshow.ca. We're also on Facebook with our fan page, the official Canadian International Auto Show, as well as Twitter, Auto Show Canada. And, of course, if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching on our website, uh, you can go directly to YouTube, and our username there is Auto Show Canada. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy the video, and we'll talk to you real soon. So, history of Tesla, we've been uh, developing a car for approximately eight years and uh, been on sale for approximately two years. We started uh, in California, our sales were first based out of California. Um, we're a 100% electric car manufacturer uh, in Silicon Valley and uh, our cars are sold now across North America, including Canada, as well as uh, Europe, uh, throughout Europe, um, into Asia now into other parts of the world. Uh, we've got factory stores uh, popping up in, uh, in many different countries. Really what separates Tesla is we're the first manufacturer of a, a fully electric, highway capable uh, car in the world. So we're really first to market, um, probably two years in advance of uh, other manufacturers. Uh, so we're really leading the charge. Others. Uh, have looked to us uh, for our leadership and have invested in our company, uh, large companies like Daimler and Toyota, and, uh, and our car has a very extended range. Uh, but what sets our car apart as well, the Roadster, is that uh, we've proven to people that an electric car can be, can be sexy and fun and, uh, and an exciting car to drive. It's a brand new, it's a new frontier, you know, electric cars, fully electric cars. Uh, the car has no oil, no gas, uh, no spark plugs. So it really is um, looking out for the environment. It has no tailpipe emissions either. And depending on the source of power, uh, the cleaner the source, like a run of river, uh, solar or wind, um, it can be a very, very excellent solution for, uh, for driving and, uh, and looking out for the environment. So I think that's how it will change our driving style is, uh, is it's, a, it's the first electric car. Well, I, I think this is where other large OEMs and some of the largest car manufacturers in the world have actually uh, looked to Tesla for our leadership. So approximately a little over a year ago, uh, last spring, Daimler became involved with Tesla made a significant investment, just under 10%, um, and then also created a, a joint venture project with us to create the, uh, the battery pack and charging system for their new smart ED, or their fully electric smart, uh, smart car, which is now uh, uh, being sold in Europe and will be sold in North America as well. Uh, then there's the future A-Class, uh, that will be a fully electric car, uh, just like the smart ED that will supply a battery pack and a charging system for. So that was really excitement for 2009 as far as other uh, manufacturers being involved. But then the largest car manufacturer in the world, Toyota, uh, became involved uh, this spring, uh, early summer, and uh, it made a significant investment in the company. And we became uh, a joint venture partner with them, with our first project being a fully electric RAV4. So that's the small SUV that's, uh, that's built in Ontario. Our rolling chassis will be shipped to, uh, to California where we'll put in our full drive train, it won't just be a battery pack and charging system, it will be a full drive train. We've already supplied them with, uh, with a couple of rolling um, test wheels for them to, uh, to uh, you know, put through their rigorous tests uh, and we expect that car to be on the market in 2012. And that will lead on to other Toyota vehicles, you know, like the Corolla or um, you know, a fully electric Prius. Uh, you know, the RAV4 will be the first one and it will lead to future models as well. So you look at the Roadster and it's a sexy exotic sports car with supercar performance and 
people think that's what the company's about. But really that's the company, you know, the car the company's created to grab those early adopters, drive down the cost of electric vehicle technology so that we can bring out an affordable car in the next five years. Our uh, development program over the next few years will be the Model S, which is a sedan based in the $60,000 price point in, uh, in Ontario after the, the electric vehicle incentive of about $51,500. And uh, that will come out in 2012. And then within two to three years after that, we'll, we're looking to have an affordable car, probably in that $30,000 uh, price range that would have an extended range, but fully electric, no gas, no oil, and, uh, and still have those, uh, that Tesla design language, that uh, beautiful Franz von Holzhausen uh, design like the Model S, but in a more compact, um, affordable package. So the 2010 Roadster Sport, this is version 2.5. Uh, it's the latest iteration, it's the third version. Uh, our first version in 2008 was 1.5 and then we had the 2.0, and now we have the 2.5. So this later iteration um, really goes back to that design language and that uh, family lineage or history that you can see now with the Model S and the Roadster Sport that has a new, completely new front fascia on it uh, that resembles the Model S, as well as a new rear valence, which is much more tucked in and, uh, and smooth and more aerodynamic than the older valence. Um, that's for the exterior changes as well as a new forged wheel option on the Roadster Sport uh, in black or silver. And then there's interior changes. So there's a brand new seat from the ground up which is more supportive uh, as well as being more comfortable. Uh, and then there's a new infotainment package. That infotainment package has a larger screen um, and that larger screen will also have uh, incorporate a rear uh, backup camera so that you can actually see when you're backing up. Uh, some people uh, complain about sight lines, so that makes it a lot easier uh, to back up. And that's uh, an Alpine system that we've put in. There's a new amplifier, uh, and all of the speakers are individually powered by that amplifier. So it's, it's a much better uh, sound system, or more advanced sound system in the car. There's a more sophisticated PEM, or power electronics module, or inverter, that can uh, withstand more heat for hotter climates. You know, not so much in Canada, but in California and Texas but also much more spirited driving uh, you know, with, the, with that hot, um, you know, with the heat transfer that goes in the inverter uh, back and forth with the power. So the Roadster Sport really stands alone when it comes to performance. I would argue that there's no quicker car in the city than the Roadster Sport. It's that instantaneous torque right off of zero RPM, so 295 pounds foot of torque. Uh, it knocks you right back in the seat, your head whips back, and, uh, and it's just the acceleration. Zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds doesn't tell the whole story because it's actually a one-speed direct drive gearbox. So there's no shifting, there's no launch control, it's all traction and it's all in the, in the forward motion. So if uh, whether it's a Porsche Turbo or a Lamborghini Gallardo or a Ferrari, uh, the, the Tesla with its torque is just, it's an amazing car in a straight line and then when you um, partner that with a very stiff aluminum chassis and lightweight carbon fiber body, through the corners it's amazing. Um, the top speed is 200 kilometers per hour, and some would argue that that's not fast enough, but, but really it's not about how fast you can drive in a top speed situation anymore with all of the, the legalities involved with that. It's more about having fun through corners, accelerating off lights and decelerating. It's, uh, it's really having that well-rounded sports car when you know 90% of your driving is done in the city or around the city in the suburbs, why not have a car that does it the best? So the battery is really the heart of the operation for Tesla. This is what took many years to develop. It's a 53 kilowatt hour liquid cooled battery, uses glycol to cool it. We have electric fans up front and radiator condenser to, uh, to cool the glycol in, in hot weather. And then we also have uh, external heaters to actually heat the battery in, uh, in cold climates. So it really is the heart of the operation. It uh, holds a tremendous amount of power, you know, enough power to, um, to power up the average home for about two days. 
so it's it's amazing. But you know, 53 kilowatt hours of power takes about 60 kilowatt hours to charge it. At 10 cents on average a kilowatt hour, it's about six dollars to fully charge a Tesla Roadster to go almost 400 kilometers. So we've got the traditional looks like uh, a gas flap just behind the driver's door. Uh, the exciting part about our car is that actually when you flip that gas flap up, it actually doesn't reveal uh, a receptacle to put gas in, it really, there's actually a charge port there. And it's a bayonet style of charge port that you come up and you twist lock on. Um, it's fully grounded, actually when you go up to charge the car you take the uh, charging bayonet off the wall, you plug it in, uh, you flip the switch, and it actually sends a very low voltage um, through the, the line, so two to three volts, to make sure that it's actually safe to send the larger 220 power through. So that first little bit you'll have a blue light, and that will change to an amber light. That amber light will start to pulse uh, gently when it's charging. Um, and at the top it's very gentle, at the bottom it's very rapid. Uh, and when it gets fully charged, uh, it goes completely green. And it doesn't allow itself to overcharge itself. Uh, you can't um, leave it plugged in and, and overcharge the battery. There are, uh, there are shutoffs. So the Roadster and Roadster Sport have been on sale since earlier uh, this year when we received approval from Transport Canada. We actually, in the last three months, uh, have sold about 30 uh, Roadsters and Roadster Sports. Uh, last month we, uh, we sold seven alone, so it's exciting times at Tesla. You can, uh, you can get a car in a, about eight weeks. Every car is custom spec, custom order. Um, it shows up in about eight to ten weeks time. Uh, we're pretty, uh, pretty good. We uh, fly our chassis uh, over from Europe. Our rolling chassis uh, comes from England. Uh, and then we ship to Menlo Park where we install the drivetrain and then we ship that right out to the customer to their door or, uh, or to our facility uh, in Toronto. So right now um, we're producing the Roaster and Roaster Sport uh, well into 2012 and, uh, and then the exciting news from there will be the Model S. And the Model S is our seven passenger sedan fully electric, once again, just like the Roadster, uh, almost a, a 500 kilometer range available on the car. It will have uh, an incredible amount of storage space. The battery pack will be in the floor pan, uh, which will allow for a, a quick change for servicing. Uh, we're talking about a 45 minute charge time for that battery pack. Um, that's really the future for Tesla, and that's where we'll see the mass market uh, really fall in love with Tesla and see a ton of uh, potential as far as sedans and then affordable cars. Uh, you'll see them on every corner is, uh, is what we expect.